Southampton, a port city on England's south coast. Famous for being the departure point of the Titanic. And as a city with a noteworthy music scene, you'd think it'd be a hot spot for street musicians. So after a quick look at the rules, which are a little different to most other places I've been, I decided to go and find out for myself. Here is how I got on busking in Southampton. then welcome to Southampton it was a bit of a mission to get here I'm not gonna lie good two hours on the train or something but I am here I won't lie to you I've already played one set so I know how it's going the lead up to today the weather has just been awful all week it's been the anti busker weather just like rain on and off where you can't you can't decide whether it's worth going busking or not but luckily today it seems to be holding out so far. Let me go through the rules in Southampton because they're a bit more restrictive than everywhere else I've been so far. Um, so here are the rules. The rules for busking in Southampton. Now Southampton's rules are a little bit more restrictive than anywhere else I've been, but they're also less restrictive. Okay, let me explain and you'll see what I mean. The council site says there is no need for street entertainers to seek authorization from the council before they perform. However, we ask performers to restrict performing to the following three street entertainment or busking points on the precinct. Precinct is a funny word. What does that even mean? So, the only place in Southampton that you can busk is above Bar Street, which is a weird street name. And on that street, there is only three pitches. The northeast corner, where JD Sports and Halifax is. The middle of the street, outside West Quay Shopping Centre. And the south side of the street, near the castle ruin city walls thing. On the council site, it does say that they don't recommend using amplification. Saying something about breaking a law or something, some kind of scare post I think but I found a few posts on a Facebook group called Southampton Buskers very appropriate name where people had said it is absolutely fine to use amplification and there is no problems and I didn't have any problems and neither did the other busker that I saw uh, he was using a full-blown PA they also state all the usual stuff like don't block the public highway don't be antisocial make sure donations are always voluntary and no selling anything. But you'll notice here that they miss out one huge thing. One huge thing that every other council of places I've been to have always stated. And, and that's a time limit. There appears to be no limit on how long you can stay in each pitch. So when I was heading to Southampton, part of me was worried that I'd get there and all three pitches would be taken and they'd be taken for the entire day. But as you'll see, despite how busy the foot traffic was, there weren't many buskers to be seen in Southampton. So let me show you how I got on. Spot number one. I arrived in Southampton about 11.30 a.m. And I was shocked when I finally got to above Bar Street to see that there were no other buskers there. This was a Saturday and it was mind-blowingly busy. So wasting no time, I just set up at the north end of the street, outside the cooperative bank. Be there, those are the best days of my life. I'm not sure if this was the correct place to set up, but I chose it because the bank behind me was closed and there was a bit of shelter above me if it had decided to start raining. And nobody seemed to mind including the police and the security officers who passed by multiple times. Immediately, things started well. Positive reactions, donations, smiles, singing, dancing, people stopping and watching. Then, about five 
or six songs in, I heard the familiar rumble of a fellow busker who had set up in the pitch along from where I was. About halfway through, and there's like a piano player just down the, just down the road doing some like improvising stuff. And he is disrupting me. But not intentionally, I don't think. It's just that this street's so small that he's disrupting me, but I don't think he means to. They were playing some improvisational keyboard over backing tracks. And they had it up loud. I'm drunk of your kiss. What was strange to me, though, was that the reaction from the public didn't seem to change. Despite both myself and the other busker being so close, the donations just kept coming. I had people stopping, watching, listening. The reaction just stayed. But I just I think maybe this is a usual occurrence in a Bob Bar Street. Especially this is the only street and there's only three pitches. Maybe this is happening all the time. Perhaps there is usually two to three buskers on this street at any given time and the people of Southampton are just used to it. Please tell me everything that you think that I should know about all the plans you made. I decided to take advantage of the limitless time I had on the pitch and I stayed there for two hours. I was slightly worried that if I left the pitch that the other two were already taken. I definitely could have stayed for longer. As I already said, the police and security were passing by often and they really didn't seem to mind. They were just smiling and letting me get on with it. It clearly isn't an issue here. And when I finished up, I could still hear the sounds of the improv keyboardist playing just maybe 100 meters away. All in all, I was super impressed after spot one. Okay, good times. This spot is so busy. Woo. Just done two hours. Two hours with the improvisation on the piano. Um, but I'm going to have some lunch and then try maybe the other end of the street if I can. But let's see how we did. There are these noisy motorbikes everywhere. People in Southampton just love noise, or love making noise anyway. Maybe that's why they liked me. Set one was super successful. Um, I played for two hours, got no disturbance. There were security and police walking around. I did see very dodgy things. I saw a couple of guys selling like back of the lorry perfume and stuff. Uh, a kid spat at me when he, uh, when he when I told him he couldn't sing in my mic, as he asked. So that wasn't nice. There's definitely some like stiff faces around here, but the majority of people were absolutely loving it. Um, so my total was £67.20 plus what I made on card. Okay, £8.88 on card so far. So £8.88 add £67.25. Future me can do the maths. So yeah, pretty good. Um, getting disrupted a bit by that other busker improvising on the piano, but to be honest, people didn't seem to mind. Maybe they're used to it. You know, those, but those spots are so close together, those three spots. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I think, is once I've eaten lunch, is go to the other end of the street. Although they did look like it was kind of like a market or something going on, so we'll see. The biggest thing that I, I thought was where are the other buskers? Like, this is such a busy place. It's a Saturday. I can't believe it was just me and one other person. Like, there's three pitches, but like there was nobody that walked past that appeared to be a busker. Like, that's so weird. Like today in Brighton right now, there's probably like 15 buskers. And today in London, who even knows? So it just, it strikes me as odd that like there's only three pitches in the entire city 
and there wasn't more people sort of wanting to play. Like I, I was expecting like a queue system or something like there is in London. But you know, I'm not complaining. <laughs> um, so let's see how we get on in spot two. All right, my second spot of the day and probably my last spot of the day. I'm gonna try and do an hour or so here to see what the difference is. Piano Man is still going. What a guy, still going. Now, because I'm making these videos, I want to try and give a well-rounded perspective when I go to these places. So I wanted to try at least one other spot on the street. Things were looking up, said it wasn't good enough. My keyboard amigo was still doing his thing in the middle spot of the street. So I set up on the southern end, backing onto a street sign and facing away from where he was playing and facing onto the oncoming foot traffic. My head said it going on because I'm in too deep and I'm trying to keep. I decided to do this because I felt that the people coming towards me won't have heard my keyboard extravaganza friend doing his thing yet. What was quite funny was the street sign behind me had a big Vodafone logo on it and where I was stood meant it was haloing my head. I think some people were taking photos of that as opposed to taking videos of me playing. Maybe we're just trying too hard Really it's closer than it is too far because I'm in This spot started slower than the first one, but it wasn't long before it got going. And again, huge amount of positive reactions. Smiles, dancing, people filming, not just to get the halo around my head. People came up to talk to me. They were giving me compliments, donations. The lot. I'm not sure if I did the right thing by facing this way either. I genuinely think the people of Southampton are used to seeing multiple buskers and therefore here it doesn't really affect anything when there are several buskers all in the same place. I also felt a little bit vulnerable not being able to see behind me. I'm not one to judge, but Southampton's police did seem to be lingering around for a reason. And I don't think that reason was anything to do with the street entertainment. After an hour or so here, I decided to call it a day, figuring that I was most likely over my goal of £100 for the day, and I had a train to catch to get back to Brian. Her name is Noel, but we had a dream about her. She rings my bell. I got you. There we go. Spot two finished. Look at this hilarious advert behind my face pretty successful and piano uh, dudes finally stopped oh no no there he goes again it just goes to show that you don't need to uh, really worry about time limit here in uh, Southampton you can clearly bus for the whole day if you want to which is uh, kind of cool I suppose yeah. right let's count this up and get on the train rumors are that that keyboardist never leaves he's just there all the time Spot two was another huge success. And I'd imagine that if I'd played in the middle spot, I'd be saying the same thing. It certainly seemed to work if you play improv keys. I ended spot two with 32 pound and 16 pence, bringing my total for the day to 108 pound 82. Meaning Southampton enters the list for places where I've made over 100 pounds. I still can't believe that there were only two buskers out on a busy Saturday in a city as big as Southampton. If you are a busker from Southampton or you busk in Southampton regularly, can you please drop a comment to let me know whether this is a regular occurrence? Because it doesn't quite make sense. Is that a usual thing? Or was I just there on a one-off? Either way, I can confirm that Southampton is a great place to busk, especially if you're somebody that prefers to set up once and just stay put. Woo! Thank you for watching this video. Like the video if you're into improv keyboard. 
Make sure to click subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are a true fan, then turn those notifications on. I am August Radio Project. I make videos every week. They come out on Mondays. I will see you in the next one. And in the meantime, maybe watch the video that's on screen or go and find another one. And I will see you next week. Peace out.